How you guys doing? We're talking F1 in Bahrain here. Now, we're going to be kind of doing like a Spark Notes, uh, uh, too long didn't read <laughs> the version of F1 here. So, first and foremost, TrueDFS doesn't have an F1 specific package. All we have in terms of specific packages is the NASCAR stuff and then the all sports things. We will talk F1 in the NASCAR channel in the Discord. I will do some F1 live streams if the demand is there and high enough. The main issue that comes from this is let's look at the 22 races, okay, every single season. So it starts off, you know, pretty modest on like, you know, very similar like how the truck series is on like a standalone Friday when the season starts. We got 11,000 people. By the time the end of the season comes around for F1, we are in like a 3,000, 4,000 person contest. And people have just stopped caring and stopped playing. That's like one of the major factors in terms of why there isn't a ton of F1 content out there is because just there's not views out there for it. F1 is by far the closest DFS sport to League of Legends and esports. If you like esports and you're good at that and you understand the intricacies and how kind of stupid that is in terms of like projections don't matter, it's literally just constructing the lineups and that's all that matters. Those people have seen success in F1. I'm not saying like Rebo Dimes and them haven't seen success and stuff. Like there's clearly people who know what they're doing in F1. But like in terms of like the recreational group who like doesn't watch motorsports or stuff, the people that I have seen run the best and do the best with like, you know, very few from like, you know, four to ten, eight lineups and stuff have been those that come from the League of Legends sports. So if you're up at 2 a.m. playing LPL and the LCK and, and crap like that, then you're just going to fit right in at home here. And so, like, in terms of, like, live shows and stuff, I will do them if the demand is there. Typically, it's, like, 2 o'clock a.m. Eastern time on Sunday, and typically nobody wants to watch a, a live stream for that. Or if I do live streams uh, late in the evening, like, I just won't watch, or people won't watch and stuff like that. Um, two... When we look at, so I mentioned like how drastically the fall off is in terms of contests. When we look at how people have approached F1 the last two seasons, um, and this is speaking from somebody who has who has won F1 contests. I played uh, optimal lineups, and I've also lost optimal lineups uh, due to like you know post race uh, standings updates and stupid FIA. Like first, I don't know why people are like, we got to get this stuff scored away. I want every sport paying out like ASAP. Who cares if they're cheating? Who cares? Like, let's score DFS at the line and let's not wait two days to have this stuff pay out, people. Like, come on. Um, in terms of F1 and how people have done in the past, when we look at how F1 scores, and we'll talk about Verstappen and stuff like that, uh, this is kind of the Bahrain uh, preview, but it's it's more so just an over-compassing like, thoughts and views and stuff related to that. And so when we look at F1... And we have seen that now that the pricing, now that DraftKings has finally fixed pricing and it isn't just uh, the same thing that we saw in season one and kind of the first half of last year, we're seeing that a lot of 150 matchers have struggled and have lost money chasing non-duplicated lineups, okay? When we're looking at the duplication between lineups and how much they win and how much they lose, when you just look at last year, and I'm just going to mention the amount that we have seen over the last uh, 22 races. And so this is starting from Bahrain last year, actually uh, last 21 races, not including the season finale. So this is from Bahrain to Las Vegas with the amount of duplications that we had. And remember that the contests were bigger at the start of the year, okay? But it, it's still situational. We're gonna, have, we're gonna have duplicated lines and stuff. So it was 17, 12, 60, 3, 51, 1, 16, 10, 2, 8, 34, 11, 29, 16, 2, 1, 6, 5, 13, 4, 1, 1, 4, and 3, okay? So we're looking at a sense of what is causing certain races to have more duplicated lineups than other races. What is causing um, a lot of situations to where previously, as, as we got lower and lower into the year and the contest got smaller and smaller, we started dealing with less people, and then more, not random stuff, we had more variants pop up of like somebody wrecking out or a teammate performing poorly or a team excelling their projected performance or whatever the case may be in terms of safety cars and all that stuff coming out. Why don't we see a lot of, not even necessarily return on value, but we don't see a lot of 150 maxers having a good return on investment in terms of if they're chasing non-duplicated lineups. And so in F1, when we're looking at lineups and stuff, 
the fact that there are a lot of different ways to build lineups in terms of your constructors, in terms of your captain, in terms of your drivers, and in the different combinations you can have when you're playing uh, a driver and a constructor from the same organization, the two drivers without the constructor for the organization, you're also debating on you know double punting with a teammate to where only one of those guys is going to get the bonus point for beating their teammate and stuff like that. And you run into a lot of situations very similar to League of Legends and esports. Okay, like when we look at League of Legends, we understand that the optimal the optimal lineup most times is going to be a four three. Okay, the intricacies of who the captain is. It might be, typically ADC is where you'd want to go, but we've seen tops, we've seen junglers be the top captain for um, whatever stack we're working on. But, like, at that point, projections don't matter. We're, we're literally building the 4-3 build, and anybody who plays it understands, like, well, you're just building lineups to try and land on the correct stuff. It's a lot of 1v1s, 2v2s in esports. F1 is the exact same situation, okay? When we're understanding um, that in terms of constructors, like the construction position, you know, you have red... Actually, you have... I'm going to call it steak. Some people call it saber and stuff, Um or even like uh, like the Red Bull secondary team that like Avatar used to be, but we have like realistically that you can play would be here. Let's uh, let's bring this up with absolutely nothing in the account real fast. All right, here we are. We have absolutely uh, a gigantic zero in the account at the moment. So when we're looking at like this type of stuff, and you're looking at constructor, like we fully understand that we're not playing. Stake, we're not playing Haas, we're not playing Williams, we're not playing Alpine. Realistically, we're not playing Alphatari, okay, or the secondary Red Bull team. In terms of teams that are actually viable in every race, you have Red Bull, Ferraris, Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren. Aston Martin is going to depend on if Stroll can just survive and not, like, fucking die and kill the team and how bad uh, Fernando is going to run. Uh, but realistically, we have four constructors to choose from, okay? With Red Bull being priced in a sea of their own, it's you, it, you're very much, constructor is the last part of your team, okay? I'm not trying to make this seem like other sports and stuff, but in terms of like, like with uh, like NFL, you just fucking play whatever defense works for you, okay? That you could realistically see, and typically that's putting down a defense. In F1, it's literally. These are the only four options there, okay? When we look at captains and stuff, and we see how people are scoring, when we look at the amount of situations to where, like, the punt captains come through, or people that are, um, like, the bottom tier, like, drivers actually coming through, it typically comes from either chaos races or certain people in the value range, uh, which would necessarily be, like, from the fours to the sixes and stuff, running into issues, or people... And the problems it last year we saw let me see we had one two three four five six seven eight we had eight of the 21 races that i'm looking at have a like true punt captain okay the other ones ended up having a captain that was in this range here and so when you're building lineups Yet again, it, it's literally, like, projections do not fucking matter, realistically, guys. Like, come on. Like, don't get caught up on the fucking projections. It doesn't matter. But what about the points? What, what do I need my projected, like, lineup to be scoring? Well, when we're looking at drastically different points of how lineups are scoring in optimal lineups, we have some lineups scoring in 160s, 150s. We have other optimal lineups in the 130s. Like, whenever I'm doing my stuff and I'm, I'm like, running my stuff, I'm like, oh, okay, what is my highest projected lineup? All right, n cool 96 points. Hell yeah. Like, projections don't matter, Okay. Like, when we're building here for, like, this weekend, uh, and even into even in, in this year, and we're looking at the, uh, the line of construction and stuff like that, like, Max Verstappen is priced out. Unplayable. Max Verstappen is absolutely not even playable. When we're looking at how he scored last year in terms of... And even I was late, I was late on this last year, looking at my stuff. I kept playing Max probably probably five to six weeks too late and I didn't adapt quick enough. That was probably my biggest fault in the second half last year just because I kept just putting in Verstappen in, in, in the driver just continuing on with my day where I would have performed much better of just not playing Verstappen because the fact that Verstappen was not optimal in a race 
Uh, we have Max Verstappen optimal in Seoul, Palo, Palo, the the one after Mexico, wherever these fucking, wherever these stupid ass races are held on. Uh, that was the twentieth race. Uh, past that, Max Verstappen was not optimal in the driver, not even in the cap position, in the driver position since we're looking back, we're looking back since Belgian Grand Prix. Um, and that was mainly following um, him being him being optimal and priced down last year. That is in these races here. So that was um, it's optimal here in the driver position at 38. We look at his pricing at six, uh, 16400 Sorry. Um, and then he was optimal last time was at Belgium. And so going back, we have him being optimal at Belgium at 37. And he's optimal. At Hungary, he's optimal in the British GP. He's optimal in Austria. He's uh, optimal in... Actually, I forgot we had... Why is this showing up as two Belgian Grand Prix? Whatever. Um, that might be... The sprint. Who who cares? I'm just trying to look through stuff. Um, as I continue on, he's optimal in Monaco. Um, 39... Anyway, the reason I'm going through this is because if you look at the pricing here, and you notice that he was trapped in the 14,000 range in the driver position, and he was still optimal and working here. Well, DraftKings ended up pricing him out of the range of being viable, and I did not adapt quick enough for that. That was my main mistake last year towards the end of the year. I just fucking kept playing him too much, and I didn't, I didn't realize that he was being priced out until it was like far too late. Um, my advice... Uh, roughly just in, in this is which I did at Las Vegas and towards the end of the year last year was just mm, X amount. Don't play Verstappen until he's back down to like 13,000 for 14,000. Doesn't fucking doesn't matter if he's winning the races. Doesn't matter if he's leading all the laps. Doesn't matter if he offers place differential. If he's just like dragging Perez through the streets in second place, you do not play Verstappen. That is the main takeaway as we move into this year. Okay. And so, at that point, you have to re-engineer of how you're approaching this race in terms of projections because at that point, they don't fucking matter. If Max Verstappen is projected to win the race, get the fastest lap, um, pass whoever, finish first, get the bonus off of Perez and finish first and gain all of the DraftKings points available, finish first and not be optimal in a position, well, then we're in a situation to where your most expensive guy is not optimal. The rest of the drivers and the rest of the players in this lineup are scoring purely based on their finishing position relative to their teammate and relative to the other people in the top 10. When we're looking at how these scoring breaks down, okay? And, like, look, I'm sure everybody already knows this stuff. But like, this is literally what it is. So, like, we have a 20-car field. Only the top 10 guys are getting scored, okay? We have Max Verstappen capping number one and or number two, whatever what, what happens here. And so the lineups are absolutely dependent on nailing who is going to be the optimal cap or the optimal lineup, chasing the optimal lineup and finishing first in these contests are absolutely dependent on getting third through eighth correctly, okay? Because this is the four points, this is 15 points, this is what we're chasing. We understand that anybody who finishes outside the top 10 is just going to get the point for finishing the race and possibly five points for, being, for beating their teammate. And so you run into a situation to where if you, or you run into a situation to where you are chasing, because the race doesn't matter in terms of who's winning because Max is just running away with the fucking field. It's who is like from second to eighth. That is the entire thing you're chasing in F1. Okay, that is the entire thing you're chasing for DraftKings. And so when we're in a situation like that, and we understand that the constructors are like, you know, we're dropping these, we're dropping these bozos. We can work with Ferrari depending on what Perez is doing. But if Perez underperforms or whatever, that takes out Perez, that removes Red Bull, that removes Max Verstappen. So we're already moving three people from the pool and we can see how they're going to be scoring poorly. We're removing everybody else from the constructors. And so that is, you know, Aston Martin, secondary Red Bull, Alpine, Williams, Haas, Stake. That's 11 positions 
that is just removed from play that don't even matter. Okay, so when you're yet again going back to the 150 matter that people run into, and you're running into a situation of, well, I need to have non-duplicated lineups. Well, that's 10 players that would help you be on your own and not duplicated. But they're also dead on arrival. These positions are just like not even going to have a chance to score well. Okay, so past that, it then goes from typically I uh, we we've seen a lot with like run the Sims. Like run the Sims is going behind the paywall this year um, after being free the last two years. But we typically saw that run the Sims and Saber Sim would run to a situation to where if you took the top twenty ish lines from Saber Sim entering a race weekend. And you looked at the top projected optimal lineups from Run the Sims, they were very similar. Okay, so if you had your top twenty, or if you just ran the top twenty lines off of off of Saber Sim um, by the default projections, thirteen of those twenty lineups would typically be the you know some of the top thirteen lineups for um, Run the Sims and vice versa. And so you it, so okay, yeah, sure. Run the Sims going behind the paywall, like it, okay. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I, those two sites are basically building identical uh, lineups and stuff. And so if you have one or the other, you'll have a good idea of like what lineups are going to be duplicated. And if you just scroll a little bit farther down to maybe lineups that are kind of more uglier one-offs, that might still be duplicated, but that's like the direction to go if you want to get different. It's not like let's focus on having four uh, unique players in a lineup. Like that's just stupid. Uh, it's literally like let's just not let let me just try and not land on a train that has sixty five people on it um, in this session. Um, past that, when we look at the um, the distribution of where teams stack up in F one and how they're typically going to score and perform and stuff, uh, like it's Red Bull clear number one as I just said. So Max wins the race. It's literally whatever Sergio wants to do is Sergio priced out we see that Sergio was optimal we have him also second quick rant right fast I know I'm just kind of talking about a lot of things really fast but another quick rant here um these f1 guys are just as stupid as the Arca drivers man uh I the facade of f1 being like the greatest spectacle in the world these guys have an IQ of 11 year olds like they they wreck as much in turn one as as the freaking NASCAR truck series drivers. Like, everybody is just autistic now. I, I just can't believe it. Like, these guys will wreck. Like, the variance is huge because, like, Ferrari just, you know, shoots their own team in the foot on every strategy call. Like, you know, Mercedes is going to just, you know, completely just give up on Lewis Hamilton this season. Science, you know, already knows he's losing his job. He's just, like, the lone wanderer just doing whatever, like, Ferrari wants him to do. Like, these guys are, are horrific. Why do so many people like F1? Why are there so many chicks that like F1, man? I just, I, 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 I don't, I don't understand. It, it is, it is, like, baffling to me that, like, there's so many women who love F1. And I'm like, you know, just watch the Cup Series at Atlanta? <laughs> That's way more fun to watch. Um, so... Once you get the facade out of the way of, like, these guys are actually, like, the pristine guys, you know, of, of, of the racing motorsports, and you realize that a lot of these guys are, like, actual true idiots, like, true blue down the woods uh, idiots. Um, like, so Perez wasn't optimal since, like I said, I don't have the last race here, but Sergio was optimal in the Italian Grand Prix, and... And Max was optimal the rest of the year. So Sergio was only optimal, optimal um, once last year, and that was in this race at the Italian Grand Prix when he scored 21 points. What the hell? <laughs> oh, that had to be a low score. In, yeah, that was a 139-10 uh, with Red Bull in the captain position. That's insane. Um, so, like, yet again, when we're building lineups, you know, we're not playing Verstappen. Uh, you're playing Perez in a sense of, if he can go through the field or and or finish top three and or win Max Verstappen inevitably wrecks and stuff. But for the most part, you want to be underweight on Perez. And so past that, we're literally building with the Red Bull guys, the Mercedes guys, the Aston Martin guys, and then literally whatever value just works out. If you notice how closely together price these guys are at the bottom, it's literally just 1v1s. Literally 1v1s. Like Nico Hockenberg is going to project to beat Magnussen Every single week, he is the better driver. He's more capable. 
what happens when Hulkenberg like you know punctures the tire and then like Magnuson comes through uh, when Magnuson is like finishing 18th, you know, and all, the only thing keeping him alive is does he beat his teammate? That's literally the story down here. You play an Albon or Sargent, who's going to beat his teammate? It it'll always project to be Alexander. Sergeant will work when Alexander crashes. Like, that's literally all it is. Like, it it it's literally lineup construction. Projections do not matter. Like, when we're looking at this race here, you know, the weekend starts in, like, 17 hours or something for, for Bahrain. But, like, we're probably going to have Max Verstappen win the race, as I said. So, like, project him to be there. You know, who's going to be second, third, fourth, and fifth? Whatever the case may be, we're most likely playing a good majority of these guys in the middle. So, like, you know. I use Mercedes as as the example constructor and stuff. And so, like, well, you know, Mercedes is there, so, like, who's going to score well? Who's going to score better, Russell or Hamilton? It would be whoever, it would be whoever, you know, qualifies and has the better car, you know, based on, on their speeds from testing and practice. We'll put Russell in there. We're at 83, okay? Well, we need to go down to the value range. Uh, who's going to score better than, uh, you know, 1v1 F1 team, Haas F1 team? Who scores better? Uh, it's going to be Nico. Okay, all right, we need a, we, we need another value play between who scores better between uh, Zhao and Botas. Um, well, there's that. All right, now we're back to a uh, captain situation. Okay, uh, well, uh, Leclerc is probably going to be the better uh, Ferrari, so you put him in there, and then, like, <laughs> that's literally all it is. Oh, I can, I, I can, I can go up to uh, Mercedes, and then we can, we can, we can ride with Perez, or we can, you know, Maybe we don't have to double pump, or not even double pump. We don't. We don't need both the value plays here, you know. So I'll just take Botas off and go up and get Albon because he's guaranteed to beat uh, Sargent and stuff. And then we're back at Perez. Oh, or let's uh, let's price up some more. And uh, you know who now? Now we're in a sense of you know we're chasing guys who are going to be in the French top ten here, you know. And so instead of the guaranteed five points between one of these value guys being his teammate, now we might be able to get somebody who's going to finish tenth, ninth. Eighth, we can pay up for Gasly or Esteban. We'll 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 we'll, we'll just do Acon here. You know, uh, I could probably you know I could probably pay up more. Uh, man, you know, Danny Ricardo, eighth best in practice. You know, uh, might might want to be chasing uh, one of these guys here. We so he's gonna beat you know Yuki Sonoda. Okay, we're back at Lando. Like that's literally all it is, man. There's like projections don't matter in F1. It's so. So stupid. It, that's why I don't offer projections. You know what my projections look like for F1? This is literally what I do. Um, let me bring up my stuff here. Because uh, it's the same thing that I do for, like, eSports and stuff. So let's let's go and take out. Let's go and check out these... Uh, these old F1. Let's just, let's just, I don't even know what race this is. Let's check out Abu Dhabi. Okay, all right. What do the projections look like? All right, uh, literally that. Uh, what are the final scores? Not even bothering to count. Not even bothering to project constructors. This is what I build with, man. It drives people crazy. Total projected points here is 150 between the entire field. I don't even project. I don't even project finishing. I don't give people the extra point to finish. I just like you. It's literally just constructing. It's literally just construction in, in for for F1. And so like. Yet again, when, when we get to, um, you know, weeks and stuff, man, I keep I keep having this, like, toupee, like, come down here. I can't brush my hair correctly. Um, when we get to, you know, every weekend and stuff and we're building and looking at stuff, it's literally coming down to a bunch of 2v2s, 1v1s. And then the 2v2s and 1v1s come in by, oh, what idiot, you know, wrecked in turn one. Oh, my God, what's this? Fernando Alonso hooked, you know, uh, Sergio Perez in turn one in, in eighth. Now they're both out of the race. Well, guess what? Logan Sargent, who started 20th, is going to gain positions and get points for, for passing more than like three cars because these idiots wrecked in turn one. Oh, what's that? You're removing two of the mid-tier or the mid-price plays. And now, like, you know, uh, Max is guaranteed to get the five over Perez. We have a uh, Stroll. Uh, automatically beating Fernando Alonso, and so like I mean, it's literally just that. It's it's literally League of Legends, okay? It's literally League of Legends with cars in the DFS uh, space, and so um, when we're if you actually know what you're doing, as we have seen from several people currently in the True DFS Discord and, and other people as well, when you start you know going through um, the lines and stuff, and people have realized you know. 
how to approach and whatnot. If you actually know what you're doing, I think it is plus EV to be entering probably like 10 to 25 lines, especially if you are very good at laying on the optimal, that's going to be just fine. If you are just playing F1 in a sense of, I got to get non-duplicated lineups, I'm going to approach this like every other sport, uh, I'm going to be playing, you know, quote unquote underdogs or th like you, you're just dead on arrival. That's been proven time and time again. That is the wrong way to, uh, to approach stuff. Um, the other major thing is that I would lean on the most of is building a lot of 1v1s that aren't necessarily in the punt range, but it's a lot of the mid-tier plays. And so, like, if everybody is playing Lewis Hamilton, play George Russell. If everybody is playing, um, I can't even remember who was on McLaren. Who the fuck? Who, who's on this team? Who is on this team? Yeah, so like if everybody's playing Lando Norris, just play Oscar. If it works, work doesn't, doesn't. It's literally like those are the main ways to get different and give yourself a real shot. Um, lines are never going to look ugly. If you got both like, you know, Logan Sargent and Kevin Magnuson in a lineup, and uh, unless like Magnuson is starting like ninth, like that lineup at the bottom still has – you just need some wrecks, and that's literally it. Um, that's literally uh, the TDL, TDLR, too, no, TLDR, too long, didn't read. Uh, F1 uh, video rant. I mean, like, dude, projections do not matter, man. It, it It's League of Legends, man. All my all my eSports homies understand what I'm talking about. That is the only group of people I've ever had message me be like, you are 100% correct. It's literally line of construction. <laughs> Everybody else like blows their freaking brains uh, uh, against the wall. They're like, "This makes no sense. How do you build with no projections at all?" Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's mainly it. Main takeaway is um, I don't foresee a reason to play Max Verstappen until we see a significant decrease in his pricing. Uh, that'll really hinder the up that'll really hinder the upside of Red Bull, which will project to be like the best cash play. And the safest manufacturer play, uh, but then if Perez runs an issue, well then you're removing three guys right off the bat, or three, um, not players, but like places in your lineup right off the bat, we're losing a ton of the construction, ton of the constructor um, options because you just that those aren't viable to play, and then you're limited by having, you know, ba like you never want to double punt with a team. Some of those, sometimes, like, Run the Sims really showed that a lot last year. I don't have all of them. Like, hold on, let me, let me try and find these real fast. All right, I, 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 I kind of gave up on, on going through a ton of them. Uh, I think these were, I don't remember exactly what weeks these are for, but I just, want, I just want you to notice, like, the builds. I'm pretty sure this Run the Sims, based on optimal frequency. I, I never use this. I would just have people, like, oh, <laughs> what does Run the Sims have? Oh, okay, yeah, it's like the same shit as like Saber Sim. But I'm like, when you start looking at these, and I'm just using this as an example of what it'll look like entering the week in terms of what lineups certain Sims and shit will will get you to play and stuff. And when we look at these, you know, they're all very similar. It's literally a bunch of one v ones, and or you'll have certain situations to where like these places will want you to do, you know, a double punt with the same thing here like my opinion this makes like no sense i i we saw this a lot last year uh from a, a lot of the different like kind of sim sites and stuff that it would want you to double play or stack a a, a team whether it be you know the williams at the bottom or haas at the bottom and or like mercedes or a ferrari or whatever and like in my opinion we just kind of crunch those out or, and you just don't play them but you need to be aware that like a lot of stuff will just be a bunch of 1v1s. I'm pretty sure this one is like another example of like optimal frequency uh, that they have. And like Max is going to pop up in a lot of these. And I think that's kind of the main reason probably why I probably stayed on them too long because we would also see that stuff here. Like this is a 15 6. So what race is this for? 15, 16 times the detail. 15 6. So yeah, that was, that, this was the Japan race. Um, where he's at like 15, six, you know, looking to score like 39 ports or something. And it's just like kind of locking them in and things to whereas what was the optimal? So this was run the Sims optimal frequency for Japan. That optimal ended up being 
Uh, Japan, 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 Japan. Where are you at, Japan? Japan, Japan. What is this called? What What is this called in the... Uh, do, oh, Japan. Okay, Japanese Grand Prix, 26. The optimal lineup was McLaren, uh, Lando Captain, okay, Max Verstappen, Esteban Ocon, Hulkenberg, and Zhao. Um, so... I believe this is the race that Fernando Alonso ran into issues in, uh, if I can remember that correctly. So we need to look at Fernando at Japan. And he did beat his teammate, but he did not score nearly as well as other people thought, clearly. I'm pretty sure I did the same thing. Like when I look at, what was this? Japan, 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 Japan. Let's look at what I had for Japan. Okay, and we looked at this. So we had captain there we had i had alonzo beaten stroll lando leclerc perez lewis hamilton looking very similar to what would have scored here uh based on this i would have had i probably would have had either mclaren or uh, where where is Hamilton? No, Hamilton's back. So I would have had McLaren as like the highest score. You don't even need like why why waste time? Why waste time projecting? Oh, the constructor here. Like we can see based on projections. When when was this? This is Abu Dhabi. My bad. Based on pro when was this last edited? This was last edited September twenty three at nine twenty three a.m. Like we can see that just based on how teams and how people are looking like, yeah, McLaren is going to be the best scorer here, uh, you know, in, in terms of projections, we're probably going to have, you know, Alonzo or whoever. I don't even know what I, I, I don't think I wrote the, I did not, I don't have the teams written down when I played, but like, that's yet again, another instance of like how things are very much like a one V one uh, in F1, projections do not matter. It, it's literally, can we build and land on the optimal lineup with the amount of lineups that you're entering? Um, and that's uh, that's, literally, that's literally it. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't know if this is helpful at all, but it, I mean, it, it's certainly talking about how just F1 works. Uh, and that's, uh, that's uh, I mean, this is all, I don't know. Maybe this helps you, maybe it doesn't. Ask me some questions in Discord or, you know, if you guys want a, a live stream, God damn it, dude. Let's see. F1 race is at 9 a.m. Saturday. So if we want if we want an F1 stream, it's got to be at like 7 or 6 o'clock. Uh, maybe even 5 o'clock Eastern time. Nobody, nobody wants that. Dude, nobody wants that. And nobody wants a video post-qualifying for F1 of me talking about the plays for the F1 race. Because it's literally just like, it's a 1v1. Here are the two constructors that could possibly work. This is where the value range is going to go. Like, it's just not good content all around, man. Um, and if you don't if you don't see it this way, uh, I, I don't know how to help you, man. Like, if you, if you don't look at F1 and be like, God damn, dude, con this content would blow. It would be so bad. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to help you there. Um, but yeah, be aware of... Probably what run the, run the Sims will push, uh, what Saber Sim will push. This is a situation where Saber Sim, uh, due to all my, my quirkiness and quirks and kind of annoyance to it in, in um, their lap by lap Sims, F1, because it's so limited in terms of viable players and stuff, Saber Sim looks good. Like they look competent and decent because, like, you can only you can only build so many lineups that would, like, actually look smart or competent and stuff. So, like, Run the Sims, Saber Sim typically look very similar. Uh, I forgot if Stochastic had one that I looked at last year and stuff. But we typically see a lot of uh, overlay between uh, potential optimal um, lineups between these sites and stuff. So part one is identifying what lineups are going to be played the most and understanding that are, am I playing enough lineups to make up for playing that and tying for first, especially in a week like this to where it's like 50 K. What is this? What, what is this contest paying out this week, man? We got 50,000 to first $150,000 purse, uh, 50,000 to first 750 to eighth. So you have 50, 60, 70, 
you have like 75 grand uh, between like the top 10 and stuff. So if that ties, if you have like a, a 30, 20 car train tying for first, you know, that's several grand for everybody else. And then it's like 80 bucks for like the second highest scoring line and stuff like that. And so you need, if you're, if you're entering, like if you're talking to both uh, like max maxers or people who want to do like 20 to 40 lines, that is when I would be okay. Yet again, kind of league of legends and esports stuff. If I'm entering that many lineups, that's when I'm okay to not worry about the trains and how duplicated the line will be. That's what I'm going to start. That's what I would chase. And I've done it both ways. I have played the optimal lineup in F1 building like 20 lines and I've done it building three and stuff like that. And so, um, if you're building a lot of lines, you understand that's going to get very expensive very quickly, you know, 100, 150 for 10 lines, 300 for 20 and stuff like that and so on and so forth. That's when I'd be okay landing on the optimal lineup or, or like running stuff that is very similar based on run the Sims or Saber Sim. If I'm running less lineups, I would primarily focus on the 1v1s between like the Mercedes drivers, the um, Ferrari drivers, people that are low owned in that range. That is where I'd primarily focus on. And then just hope that the other driver runs in issues and or uh, playing like really, really ugly, like Sergeant plays or, or stuff like that. Um, and that's really, that's really my, my takeaway for F1. So I will, uh, I will talk to you guys, uh, later for trucks probably, uh, or Xfinity rather. Anyway, uh, yeah. Welcome to F1. This is Bahrain weekend week one preview. Uh, I'll see you guys. See you guys later.